God bless you. So glad to have you with us here at God's Got a Plan. Uh, it's so very important that we really pay attention to how we're living this life. And if I want to be like anybody, if you want to be like anybody, you should want to be more like Jesus. You know, the Bible says that Jesus was a man that was moved with compassion. So he had compassion for, for people. He loved people. And I want you to know tonight that we're going to take a look at that word called compassion. And hopefully, if our lives aren't aligned with his, maybe we can go into this word tonight and we can, let's just say, change. Let's just say some of the things that we're doing, some of the things that we're leaning towards. Compassion is being, let's just say, very sensitive to the needs of others. So coming out of the book of Matthews, Chapter 9, and this is uh, Matthew's talking about Jesus in reference to how he went about. Here's what it says in the 35th verse. It says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He went about teaching. And it's so very important that we understand that we have to be up under the word where we're able to be taught. And it said, not just teaching in their synagogues and preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and disease among the people. That's why I said, if you want to be like anybody, you should want to be like Jesus. My God, my God. But here's, here's the 36 verse. But when he saw the multitudes, when he saw the many people that were all around, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Are you hearing me? Are you fainting tonight? Are you getting a little tired, a little weak, a little weary of what you're dealing with and what you're going through? You know, sometimes these things that we're going through can, can just break us down to the point where we just want to give up. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, don't give up. Don't give up, my brother, my sister. Hold on. Keep on pressing and understand all things are working together for the good. You see, and this is what Matthew said now. Matthew said now that they were like sheep without a shepherd. This is why the word of God is so very important. And when I say that, I'm talking about being up under the word, having a, a pastor, being in a fellowship. The Bible says don't forsake the fellowship. You know, when we allow ourselves to be ostracized, and let's just say out of the fellowship and set apart from, let's just say, the, the teachings and the preach word. So very important that we're getting that word because that word of God is going to challenge you. And every now and then we need to be challenged. Every now and then we need to take a real honest look at what we're going through and how we're treating people and, and, and how we're being treated. Because, you know, things is, is it, life is a two-way street. You know, what goes out comes back, so on and so forth. We can point fingers at others, but we don't realize there's a thumb pointing back at us. So it's so very important that we're demonstrating that God kind of compassion, that faith, that belief in this word of God and not leaning to our own understanding. And look at what the 37th verse says. And he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers a few. The harvest is plentiful. There's a lot of work out there. The harvest is plentiful, but to find a few good men, a few good women that's not doing their own thing, but are willing to, let's just say, to step into this uh, gospel and, and live this. We don't just want to talk it. We want to live it. We want to walk it out. We want to demonstrate the compassion that Christ demonstrated. I'm talking about it from the book of Matthew all the way to Genesis, Revelations, I should say. The book of Genesis to Revelations is really all about Jesus, all about God, letting you know that my God, that, that, that Emmanuel, God with us, is going to come in the form of a man. And he did that. My God, he did that. And he demonstrated a compassion that he wants his people, he wants you. I'm going to say it again. He wants you to demonstrate. He wants you to demonstrate amongst your peers, amongst your family members, amongst your loved ones, amongst, 
your co-workers, amongst the saints in the church. And sometimes that's hard to do. Oh, my God. Because sometimes, you know, we can kind of drop our guard in church and not realize, my God, that's where the attack comes. Well, Scripture says where good is, evil is always present. You know, if you're looking for the perfect church, don't step into any church. Because once you step into that perfect church, it's not perfect anymore. Because none of us, we all fall short. So don't look for a perfect church. But if you can, if you can let's just say, follow Jesus. The Bible says when we deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him, my God, then you can begin to see the change in your life where you can become more compassionate, more loving, more caring. Hey, how can we be Christians and not really care about our fellow man, not really care about that family member? And when I say that, I'm, what I'm saying is this. We can be so quick to want to go out there to the prisons and to the different uh, facilities, to the hospitals, passing out tracks in the street. But yet and still, we will not drop a word of this word of God on a family member, on a loved one. And they can be so close to us, but we're willing to go right past them, go around them and hit someone or meet someone in the street and try to bring them into the fellowship. I want you to know and understand your first responsibility is your household. And we need to be demonstrating that God kind of faith and that compassion, that love, my God, that is so, so needed today. Oh, because when you look at the way life is going and the way the world is moving today, we're moving so far away from the principles, so far away from this word of God. You have to see the importance of it. So look, listen to this, because this, this 38 verse really, really grabbed me when I, when I read this, and, and I didn't see it like this before. But here's what it says. Pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into his harvest. So God is saying, well, what Matthew is saying is that God has a harvest. In other words, God has a field. We could be working the wrong harvest, the wrong field. Are you working the harvest that God has sent you to? Or are you working something that you've given to yourself? Doing what you want to do. Oh, my God. And, and you're trying to figure out why it's so difficult. Well, whether you're doing what God has called you to do or whether you're doing what you want to do, it's going to be difficult anyway. Because the enemy does not want you to get comfortable in doing anything that's going to lift up the kingdom and glorify God. But understand that just like God has a harvest, the devil have a harvest too. And the Bible says, as a man sow, so shall you reap. So what harvest are you sowing into? Are you sowing into God's harvest or are you sowing into the enemies? You know, because the enemy can dress it up, make it look like a good thing to do. And let me say this, every good thing is not a God thing. Every good thing is not a God thing. You want to make sure you're adhering to the principles and the statutes, and you want to make sure you're living this word of God. You want to live this word of God, and you want to be compassionate towards your loved ones and your fellow man. Oh, the Bible says we're to love our enemy. We're to show our enemy compassion. We're to show those, matter of fact, you know, there's those who have come to the church and come into the fellowship, but it might seem like they're in a struggle for a long time and they just can't seem to get it. They just can't seem to break that drug habit. They just can't seem to stop doing those things that we would say is wrong. You have to have compassion for them. You have, instead of talking about them, start praying for them. Start praying for them. Start lifting them up before the Lord in prayer. Look at Psalms 30, Psalm 38. Psalms 86, excuse me, Psalms 86 and 15 says this. But thou, O Lord, are the God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. But thou, O Lord, Lord Jesus, full of mercy and compassion. Are you hearing me? So we realize now, if you, if you, if you feel like, my God, that you're so estranged from God and like God just doesn't care about you or doesn't know what you're going through. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, the devil is a liar. Oh, the Bible says he will never, 
leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Are you hearing me? God is so close. He's so near to you right now tonight. And I want you to know his love, my God, abounds. His grace, his mercy abounds. So irregardless of what you might find yourself in tonight, I want you to know and understand, my God, my God, his mercy, his grace, it abounds. You are covered under the blood of Jesus. I'm going to say that again. You are covered under the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood. Are you hearing me? We don't just sing these songs just to sing them now. There's some meaning behind those words. It's, the, it's in the blood. The blood is able to wash your sins away. The blood is able to keep you. So look at this in Mark 6 and 34. And Jesus, when he came out, he saw a lot of people, much people, and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. There are many things to be learned, my brothers and sisters. But I'm here to tell you, if we're not, let's just say, implementing compassion, you know, love, if we're not allowing our faith to, our faith have to grow. Our faith should be growing. Your faith should be growing. You know, as you stay in this word, this, your, your faith is going to grow. These different trials and tests you find yourself going through. And I want you to understand, so there's some people in your life that's going to bring stuff to you that's going to, ooh, going to cause you to, ooh. But you have to demonstrate that compassion. You have to be able to look past the fault of others and see the need that's in their life. Whether they are saved, unsaved, understand the enemy will use anything and anybody to get into your spirit. So it's so very important that you are, let's just say, exercising your God-given right. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, I give you power to thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, meaning no thing, shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because the Lord is a God that is full of compassion. And he wants his people, he wants you to be blessed. Are you hearing me? He wants you to be blessed tonight. And you just have to take up your mantle and understand that whatever it is you're going through, it is only a test. I'm here to tell you tonight, it is only a test. What you have to do is hold on to that God kind of faith. Not give in, not give up. My God, I'm here to remind you, the devil is a liar. Your situation might look bad, but it's not as bad as it might appear. Why? Because all things are working together for the good. Why? Because God's got you covered. Are you hearing me? He's got you covered. Why? Because he's the God of compassion, and he loves you so much. And if you have been adhering to this word of God, he will never forsake you. He will never leave you. He will never turn his back on you. Trust God today. Saints, you got to trust God today. Oh, this is, this is something now. Now, look, look at Psalms 145 in the 17th verse. And I think this is so very important because we as a people, we will sometimes miss this and not realize what God is saying to us. Look at what it says. 145 and 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth and call upon him in faith. Are you hearing me tonight? You have to call upon him in truth and call upon him in faith, believing, knowing that all things are working together for the good. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. And you know, the real deal is you'll destroy yourself. Anytime you disconnect from God, you set yourself up to be destroyed. So it's so very important that you understand that you have the responsibility now. You have the responsibility of, let's just say, of demonstrating that character, that Christ-like character, being compassionate, being loving, 
being caring. You know, here's what, here's what uh, God said to Moses in Romans 9 and 15. For God said to Moses, I will have mercy on who I will have mercy on, and I will have compassion on who I will have compassion on. Are you hearing me? So I want you to know and understand, you know, if you are in Christ, his mercy, his grace will abound. You're covered. So let me, you know, there's a message I spoke one time before, and I said, we as God's people need to calm down, shut up, and stop tripping. You know, why? Because God's got you. He's holding you in the hollow of his hand. He's got you. I, I want you to know he loves you too much to let the enemy take you out. So if you can just trust him today, if you can trust him tonight, if you can stop leaning to your own understanding and establish yourself in him, understanding that your faith have to be unshakable, you have to stand on this word and know that this word works when you work it. I'm going to say it again. This word of God works when you work it, when you work it. First Peter 3, 8 and 9. Finally, all of you must be of one mind, having compassion one for another. Love as brothers. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil. Are you hearing me? not rendering evil for evil, nor rallying, meaning fighting against those that would fight against you. You don't want to do that. And then otherwise, blessings, knowing that you are called, I'm going to say it again, you are called and that you should call, that you should inherit the blessing. God wants you to walk in the blessings let me put it like this, the manifold blessings of God. I mean, he just want to keep stacking them up, stacking them up and stacking them up. And you have to be one that would demonstrate that compassion. You have to be forgiving. You have to be loving. You can't allow, you know, bitterness to keep you from getting better. Bitterness will keep you from getting better. God wants you better, not bitter. So you have to let go of whatever it is the enemy is trying to use to, to, to bring division between you and a loved one, you and a friend, you and a co-worker, you and a saint, Lord Jesus. I want you to know, you know, the Bible says, how can uh, good water and bad water come out of the same fountain? Can't. So in other words, I have to be able to speak love. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, and you will eat the fruit thereof. In other words, either it's going to be some good fruit or some bad fruit, something that is edible. I want something edible. I don't want anything that's going to tarnish my relationship with God. He's called us to be compassionate and loving. I'm going to give you this last scripture, and I know that this last scripture is going to bless you. Coming out of uh, Psalm 78, Psalm 78 in the 35th verse. And I, I read this, and I think this is a good way to kind of begin to start wrapping it up. Here's, here's what it says. In the 35th verse, and they remembered that God was their rock. I want you to remember tonight that God is your rock and the high God, your redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. You don't want to flatter God. You don't want to tickle his ears saying these nice things because we know how to talk to talk. But when it comes to walking the walk, you see, and when you are a compassionate, loving individual. I want you to know that God is truly on your side. Why? Because you're demonstrating the character of Christ. Look at that 37th verse. For their heart was not right with God. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant, in his word. See, you're, you have to have the right spirit. You have to be in this word. You know, you know, their heart was not right with God. See, you know, you know, out of the heart comes the issues of life. What you're living is what's in your heart. You want to make sure that you are loving and compassionate. Uh, see, if people do everything you want them to do, and then, you know, you, it's easy to love them. It's easy to love someone that will do everything you want them or tell them to do. It's those people that's in your life that are not doing those things that you might want them to do 
or think that they should be doing or living before you. So it's so very important that we realize I have to have compassion. You have to have compassion for your neighbor. You have to have compassion for your loved one. I'm going to keep throwing that word out because I want that word to get in your spirit. God want that to get in your spirit where it becomes a lifestyle, where you're living a life, where you're comp showing God's love and compassion towards your fellow man. Everyone, everyone. And it's not an easy thing to do. Look at the 38th verse. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity, forgave their sin. See, God, being full of compassion, forgave your sin. And if he can forgive you of your wrong, who am I, who are you not to forgive that person, that individual who have erred or talked about you, mistreated you, or whatever they have done against you to displease you? You have to let them go. Let them go, my brother. Let them go, my sister. Be the bigger person. You might have to be the one to pick up the phone and call them. You might have to be the one to drop a letter or a line or send a text or Facebook, whatever means of communication. You might have to be the bigger one because then God will see that you are living according to this word of God and you're adhering to his word and he's going to bless you. He want to bless you. Look at this. And destroyed them not. Many a time turned he his anger away. And he was mad at us. Lord, gee, more than one occasion. And did not stir up all his wrath. The 39th verse says, why didn't he do that? For he remembered that they were but flesh. A wind that passeth away and cometh not again. So you're here. You're here. And long we're in this flesh, we need to understand the clock is ticking and we're not here for a long time. And it's best to get this as soon as you possibly can. Because as he says in the scripture here, we're like a breeze. We're like the wind. We're here and we're gone. So you want to be able to live this life. You want to be able to do those things that's going to, let's just say, demonstrate that Christ-like character. And look what he says in the 40th verse. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They turned back. Don't turn back, my brother, my sister. They hindered the, the blessings of God by turning back. You don't want to hinder the blessings of God. You don't want to stop the blessings of God over your life by turning back. And going back into your mess. Uh, your future is calling you. Are you hearing me? Your future is calling you. You don't have to look back in your past. You know what you walked out of. You know what you lived. But that future is uncharted land. You don't know what the future holds. But you know who holds your future. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God want to bless you. He want to bless you. Don't, don't stop the blessings of God in and over your life. By going back. Oh my God. Reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press. You might have to press through some stuff tonight. Keep on pressing. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't fall to the tricks, the schemes, and the lies of the enemy. Know that you are somebody. And God loves you truly. And he wants you to know that you are already kept in the hollow of his hand. He's got you. He's got you. He's not going to let you go. And then look what he says in the 42nd verse. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. You have been delivered from the enemy. Are you hearing me? If you've been delivered from the enemy, why go back? Why go back? See, when, when we're not operating in that God kind of love and that faith, so on and so forth, I want you to understand you're not going to be able to fulfill the call that is on your life. I believe in Ephesians, uh, it says that we are called to walk worthy of the vocation. You want to live your best life now. You want your life to matter. And in order for your life to matter, you have to love and demonstrate that Christ-like character. Let me pray for you now. And I'm going to believe God tonight that he's going to turn some hearts. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come humble before our Lord and our Savior. We're asking for the forgiveness of sin. We're asking you, Lord God, to move by your spirit in our life. We're asking you to make a way out of no way. 
We're asking you to do what only you can do, Father God. And we know, Father God, that we can only have or demonstrate that compassion when you fill us with your love, when you fill us, Lord God, with your grace and mercy, Lord. Your grace and mercy, let it abound in our life where we're able, Father God, my God, to be that compassionate saint, that compassionate brother, that compassionate sister, that compassionate believer. You want to be a person, a man, a woman of compassion. And Lord, we realize we can't do that without the help of your Holy Spirit. So Father God, move by your spirit in our lives. Bless us in that area of need. Comfort us and let us know, Father, that all things are working together for the good. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us no longer to lean to our own understanding, but let us establish ourselves. I pray that my brother, my sister would establish themselves in you. Help them now, Father God. Heal the sick and afflicted. Help that wayward child. Help that parent, that single parent, Father God. Oh, Father, we need your help tonight. Give us the compassion to live that life that would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you here at God's Got a Plan, and it's our, our responsibility and duty and assignment to bring you these words, this word of God that would challenge you. We want you to know that God loves you. We love you too, and we want the best for you. And we're hoping that this program and our programs are bringing something to you that will help you to live your best life now. You can reach us on, uh, you know, on YouTube. If you, if you missed any part of this show or any past shows, you can follow us on YouTube. Send us some mail. Matter of fact, just follow the credits at the end of the show. And it'll tell you how to contact us if you desire. If you would like a, a daily bread, just send us your name, your address, and that information, and I'll get one to you right away. Give us a phone call if you want some prayer. If you're not saved and you want to be saved and you're not in a church right now, oh, give us a call and let us lead you to Christ. And let us show you this. Let's, let us introduce you to this man who loves you more than you could ever love yourself want you to know that you're very special to God and you're very special to us. God bless you now. Come back and see us again the same time, the same place, in the same station. Don't forget now, operate in that compassion of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.